Hello everyone, welcome to another 45 Drives Tech Tip. Brett Kelly here, and today we're gonna talk about self-encrypting drives, said drives. Uh, we're gonna talk about just a brief, like what are they? What are they useful for? Uh, we'll do a little demo of how you can use them. Um, just talk about how they can be useful in an open source system. You don't necessarily have to buy a big proprietary lockdown um, solution to get some lockdown drives. And just a little touch on the caveat of if you need them. Is software encryption good enough? Hardware encryption, what's the right answer? We'll cover it all. So, without further ado, let's begin. All right, so let's start off with first, like what is a self-encrypted drive or a said drive um, to use the acronym? So hard drive SSD doesn't matter. It's a specification um, and it is aptly named because it is a drive that encrypts itself. There is circuitry on each individual drive that um, will encrypt data writing to the disk and then decrypt it on its way back out and this is transparent to the operating system. Meaning that all the OS and CPU and everything doesn't have to worry about the encryption and the drives do it themselves. This gives you encryption at rest, meaning that if someone comes in and physically steals your hard drives, they can't go power it on and then go see what's on it. Um, even if they did get fancy and they got into the platters and read all the bits, it's all mangled. They don't know what any of it means. So. Said drives are a great way to keep your data encrypted at rest, and if you're worried about anyone pilfering your data, oh, maybe they can't get in your network, and maybe they can't get it that way, uh, but they were able to get into your data center and grab your drives, mm, they still can't read anything. Okay, so that's a very general high-level overview of what a said drive is. Um, now, you've got a project that's requiring you to use said drives, and you go out and you hit the Google, the Google, and say, you just go look for information on how you would use said drives. Um, what you're going to find is not much, and when you do find it, you're going to just be pointed to the big, the big guys, the IBMs, the HPs, and all that stuff, and they're like, here, buy our big, big array, and it's all said dried up, and don't worry about it, and call us for a price, and everything like that. But you want to use a somewhat open source solution, maybe you want to buy a 45 drives box, and you want to use said drives in it. Um, there's not a lot of great information on how you do that. And um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I want to show how you can use a self-encrypted drive in a 45 drive server, or really in any open source Linux flavor, the tools you need to use to lock that drive and keep your data safe. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's show you that. Let's go over to the screen. I'll give you a little demo. And as we're talking about it, um, well, I'll just share my opinions and thoughts as I always do. So join me at the screen, let's get started. All right, so here we're sitting at uh, Houston. Um, let's pop into the terminal. So I have a bunch of said drives in this system. So um, let's let's play with them. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the said util dash CLI. That's the kind of magic binary here that's going to lock, set up drives, unlock drives. That's that's the magic right there. So this said util um, tool is. Uh, it was a project authored by the Drive Trust Alliance, which was made up of a bunch of hard drive companies. It has since been forked a couple times. And if you go looking on which version to use, it's not entirely clear which one works and which one doesn't, which kind of adds into the kind of mystification of using these said drives. So we've spent some time. We have a fork of it live on our GitHub. We have made some edits to it, particularly only to allow more than 26 drives to be used. Um, by default, this tool only saw drives SD A through to Z. It didn't see any of the, the other ones like uh, um, you know, kind of names like Excel does. Once it runs out of A to Z, it then goes AA through to AZ, and then you know what I mean. Anyway, so long story short, if you're looking to use the said util utility, um, go uh, check it out on our GitHub. Uh, the fork we use is supported on our systems, and then if you go back to the, the source that we forked it from, that one works well too. Um, anyway, so that's the said util CLI command. That is the heart at what we're doing here besides the drives themselves. So um, let's, uh, let's work with one of the drives. So like, let's, let's just take a look. Um, is valid said dev SDI, that's one of my drives. So dumps out here. So it tells me the name, it tells me that it's a said drive, great. It has an E here, meaning that it adheres to the enterprise um, SED uh, um, 
specification, because remember, I meant, I, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this. There's two specifications. There's like, there's one called Opal, and then there's one called Enterprise. The Opal one's really useful for like, if you want to encrypt your boot drives. This one's great for just encrypting your storage drives. So these are Enterprise um, drives using the Enterprise said specification. Hopefully I didn't lose you because this confused me a lot going through this. Then here's the model number and the firmware number. But the point is, is if you run this on your drive, UC said and UCE, great. You can encrypt that thing. So let's keep going. Let's go said util. Um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to do the initial setup. I'm going to lock the thing. Then we're going to power the machine down. I'm going to delete the key, turn it back on, see that we can't get it. Then we'll unlock it live and see how it all works. Okay, so initial setup, and what we want to do then is give it a key. So I have a key on my root file system. Now, I'll do that, SDI. So hopefully I didn't screw the syntax up. Nope, I think it's pretty happy. So just wait a sec, so it changes the SID password. Do a little master here. Bunch of fails, but don't worry, it finished off correct. It failed successfully. This is what it's supposed to look like. So that drive is set up. Now we have to um, enable the locking range. Enable locking range zero. Again, I'm going to use the same key that I had used before. Um, and I'm going to go dev SDI. So um, from what I understand with this is these drives have locking ranges. They have from zero to eight. Um, again, that'll vary depending on your um, uh, hard drive manufacturer, but meaning that you can actually have zones of your hard drives. Um, actually, now that I think about it, it's probably a platter each, but whatever, that's me just speculating. Um, what that means is you could actually lock each range if you wanted to. Um, that's not what we're trying to do here. I want to lock the whole thing. So if we lock the zero range, that's the global and it just locks everything with the same key. So again, hopefully I got the syntax right. Boom, we nailed it. So locking range is configured. As far as this drive is concerned, it's been initialized with the key and now it's locked with the key. I can still work with it right now though, because at this point, the drive is still unlocked because it's active. What, what'll happen to activate this key and to lock this thing down? Sorry, let me rephrase that. The drive is able to be written to and everything right now. It's not locked per se, but it is encrypted. Every piece of information I put onto this drive now is encrypted. If I boot this system back, if I power it down and boot it back up, in and to be specific, if I power the drive down and power the drive back up, and if the correct key doesn't unlock it, it's garbled, can't see anything on there. So to prove that, let's put a file system on it right now. This should take just one second. It's taking more than one second because, well, no, there we go. I'm impatient and can't fill silence with anything. So I ramble. Anyway, mount, uh, let me just mount that as a generic mount directory. And then what I'm going to do there is we can see it mounted. Um, we'll just like echo, hello, I am unlocked. And we're going to put that as file one onto here. Uh, cool. Yep, everything's good. Hello, I'm unlocked. Perfect. So let's actually make this thing work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my key. I'm the said key. I'm going to shut down the server. And when she comes back up, I'll show you that I cannot access that drive. Okay, we did a full power off and a start back up, and now we're ready to see if the drive's locked. Um, I'll take this time to say real quick too, Reboots don't actually turn the power off in the system. If you rebooted this, that drive would still stay unlocked. Remember, it's encrypted, but it would stay unlocked because power was not removed from the drives. To lock that drive and make sure it is, um, yeah, to lock the drive, you have to remove the power from it. So uh, if rebooting a server won't actually do it, but that's fine because the main point here of protection, again, if someone yanks that drive, that'll lose power. <laughs> anyway, so. Let's see, is the drive actually locked? So we'll run dmessage. So this is while the thing was all booting up and see all this red we're looking at here. So uh, this is trying to pick drive SDI back up, the one I've locked. 
and then the one where I deleted the key. So the system is now trying to go, okay, I'm trying to get in this drive, and the drive goes, uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. You didn't say the magic word. Uh, Please! Uh, uh. You don't have the key. And it says right here, access denied, no access rights. The system tries a couple more times and it doesn't fly. Um, if you want, like we can see, uh, like if I even just tried to mount it right now, because the, sorry, like make, let's make it clear. Um, the system does, is aware it's there, but it just cannot access it whenever it tries to write. Um, so if I tried to mount this again, it can't read the super block on SDI, so it doesn't know what the hell's going on. It thinks the drive's broken or whatever. But if I look at D message again, it gets flooded with a, like, I, I have no access rights. Mm -mm -mm. So um, yeah, drive's locked. Works. If this is what it would look like if someone grabbed that drive and went and plugged it into another system. So they're not getting your stuff. But with that said, let's put the key back. Um, let's put the key back. What was the key? Well, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is a demo. So the key was password all along. <laughs> Don't do this in production. Um, said key. So I'll just make that file again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to unlock this thing. We're going to... I don't remember the unlock command. We we're using scripts to do everything. Let me check the help. Uh, we want to, what do we want to do? We want to set locking range. This is what we want to do right here. So we're going to go said util set locking range zero, because remember we did the global band. We want to give it read write access and we're going to give it the password again. Yeah. Sorry, the key, not Etsy, it's in root, said key, and then the drive, dev SDI. Take a second. Okay, read write set at zero. Now if I try to mount this thing again, let me just dev SD, SDI, mount, cool, that worked. Mount, file one, hello, I am unlocked. Congratulations, it works. So there we have it. Drives are unlocked. Um, now, if anyone's watching, it's like, okay, that's cool, man, but like, I can't unlock each drive by hand every time I have to boot my server back up or whatever. So what you do in practice is use something called UDEV rules. And what that means is um, it's, a, it's a UDEV rule in Linux. What it does is when it ever sees a hard drive plugged in, if, if it matches the model number of the model numbers we're looking for, if it has this feature, it'll run a set unlock command, or, which is really a script that holds all the information I just did there. Meaning that when your server boots up the first time, it unlocks all the drives because the UDEV rule fires and then magically unlocks it for you. Or even better, if you have to replace a drive, anytime a drive is plugged in, that UDEV rule kicks in and unlocks the drive as well. If you have a new drive, it'll also initialize it first if you have to. But we're not going to do that on here. Um, that's something we can help you out here at 45 Drives. Which kind of brings me to the end of the video. I want to talk about um, the elephant in the room. This is a hardware-defined storage system, uh, solution, whatever. It's hardware-defined. We here love software-defined things. We love the flexibility of that. Uh, so why did I take all this time to talk about said drives? Well. I think I said it in the intro, some people are required to use them. Whether it's a regulation, whether someone's got a tinfoil hat on and they're scared of everything, or just maybe they just want to because they think it's cool. But mainly, the first one is regulation. Someone, someone has a project that requires them to use self-encrypting drives. And if you go look on the internet for this thing, there isn't much information and the information around it is all about the, the big vendors and the big money and the call us and we'll tell you how much we're gonna, money we're going to take from you. What we wanted to show you here at 45 Drives is if you have to use said drives, we got you covered. We can use them here in Linux systems, we can use them in 45 Drive systems, and um, as always, we love to share that information. So let's end with a real opinion. What do I like better? Hardware defined self encrypting drives or something like LVM crypt and software defined? I always am going to lean software side, but like I said, every use case brings a different solution and we here at 45 Drives love to give you guys the solution that you need. So if you need said drives, if you need those in a cost-effective storage system, whether it's a ZFS box or a Ceph cluster, we got you covered.